Suppose you wanted to plot the richest nations on Earth, discover the meaning of the word shitepoke, change the moon's orbit so that it bounces off the Earth, get some practical tips on creative lovemaking positions, discover what a Greek dipler, sorry, that should be Deepler. sounds like, ogle some cats. And who knows, one day you might want to. Then you'll be wanting one of these. It looks like a CD. In fact, it is a CD, only recorded in its microscopic pits isn't dire straits, but digital information, vast quantities of it, more than you can imagine, all of it accessible using a personal computer. It's called a CD-ROM, ROM standing for read-only memory, and in America, at least, it's regarded as the next big thing. CD-ROM publishers are boasting that they're producing not games, but virtual cinema, not computerised books, but interactive novels. And that's when the vision came. A doll, and in his dream, Stock reached out. In order to access this cornucopia of information, you need some pretty hefty hardware. A standard desktop computer won't do. You need what's grandly called a multimedia system. More and more systems are kitted out for multimedia these days, but those that aren't will need upgrading with the addition of a sound card and a CD-ROM drive. Assuming you've got all that, you're ready for action. And what action? This is just a selection of the CD-ROM titles currently available, and their numbers growing daily. They fall into two main categories of interest, reference and games. Reference CD-ROMs sound dull, but are in fact an absolute revelation. The first time you fire one up, you feel the virtual world is your oyster, your bivalve mollusk, your clam, cockle, mussel or scallop. You don't just have information at your fingertips, to use Microsoft's favourite phrase, you have it up to your armpits, more information than you know what to do with. You're at the start of a journey that could take you anywhere. Suppose you're actually interested in finding out about mollusks. You look up about other types of mollusks, find out about the food web, ecology, natural selection, biology, nucleic acids, molecules, quantum theory. And because this is multimedia, any medium is available. As well as text, you have animation, sound, video. But the problem with reference CD-ROMs is that, well, they're, they're simply too smart. With a mounting sense of panic, you think, what am I going to ask next? Am I being interesting enough? An alert signal, if you can still read me. Like reference, the games give you a thrill from the moment you fire them up. The voluptuous graphics, the delicious sounds, it's a feast of new experience. You meet people, you go places, you see things. It's all so exciting. At 30 or more quid a throw, a CD-ROM game better be exciting, and not all of them are. If you're after super-fast, side-scrolling, head-splitting, cardiac-arresting action, then you don't want one of these. You probably want one of the new CD-based games consoles that are beginning to reach the market. CD-ROMs for PCs are gentler, more adult. Indeed, some are very adult, as ads in the back of a number of American magazines testify. Some games, however, are truly innovative and offer at least a glimpse of what might turn out to be a genuinely new medium. For example, you have what is grandly called virtual cinema, a form of game where you're supposed to take on the persona of one of the characters and act out his or her role. I hate that, Drew, and I hate that game, and I hate the fact that you watch it. The whole Unfortunately, the interaction is, to say the least, basic. You don't really converse with anyone. It's more a matter of form-filling. Oh, that color looks nice on you. You think so? I thought it kind of washed me out. You also seem to spend an awful lot of time wandering rather aimlessly around empty corridors or barren terrain, waiting for something, anything, to happen. 
a ghostly apparition, a dream sequence, a disembodied voice ordering you to do something. Some of these excursions can be exciting. Some of the landscapes you pass are quite captivating. But even the best get tiresome after you've trudged through them for the hundredth time and are often made virtually unbearable by the lift music that accompanies you wherever you go. Are we then beholding the birth of a new medium? It seems perhaps we are, but one not without its problems. To begin with, standard desktop PCs can barely take the strain of all that multimedia expects of them. The system tends to run very slowly as it trudges its way through the data. We're talking tractors here, not testarossas. A deeper problem is overcoming this sense of being alone and rather lost. We're used to our media spoon-feeding us. You're being spoon-fed now, although of course it's with the chocolate top to banana sundae of television that your spoon is filled. With interactive media, even when the interaction is as crude as it is with current CD-ROMs, you have the spoon, and it's not always clear what you should do with it. Ah, become a grave digger now, have we? Thank you.